Hey everyone, this is Tim again, the Associate Pastor with the Word of Life Church, and welcome to another edition of the Word of Life Church Video Ministries. Hope everyone, as always, doing well, and most of all, that you are saved and walking in the will of God. Amen. Most important thing, amen, that you're saved. Uh, as we always say, greatest thing you can possess in this world, uh, greater than all the riches, amen, that you can possess, and things that you can possess, amen. I know that... Uh, you know, probably have a lot of people out there have a lot, amen. You see it, uh, well, of course, a lot of people uh, like to show their stuff off. And, you know, <laughs> we got to uh, keep, as the old saying, keep up with the Joneses and, uh, you know, have stuff. And somebody else has something, oh, i got to have that too, you know. Uh, people, it's just stuff. <laughs> it's all going to perish, you know. You're going to have it for a few years, and it's going to break down, or it's you know eventually you're going to let it go, or it's going to break down, and you know it's going to be gone. Uh, so, uh, you know, am I am I condemning you for having stuff? No, no. Uh, but realize that it's a blessing of God that you have that stuff. Amen. And. Uh, don't let the stuff, as we always say, have you. You know, realize that it, that it is a blessing of God, and that it is His favor upon you. Saying, brother, what about the people that aren't Christians that have all this and have all these riches and have all this stuff. Well, I often think about that, and you know, it, to me, it seems to me that that just might be their portion and all that they'll have in this life. Because if they don't have salvation they're going to leave all that here and then they're going to be laid in the grave and at the moment of their death you know hell is going to be their home that's it period unless they have made the decision for Christ and they gave his life or gave their life to him amen that you know since he willingly gave his life for us, amen, on that cross and arose victorious, amen, over death, hell, sin, and the grave for you and I, amen. Unless they do that and they're trusting in their own self and their own riches and their own accomplishments and don't have the belief, amen. A lot of people in Holly Weird, <laughs> as we like to call it, have that belief, amen. Of course, there's a lot going on in that, with that bunch. You know, a lot of satanic garbage going on with that bunch. That uh, I don't know. <laughs> Depend on Lord lets that flow through me and to speak about uh, here now or later or whatever. But uh, a lot of people knows there's to a certain extent what goes on behind the scenes there. Uh, but main thing. Keep the main thing the main thing amen and that's God first in your life amen that comes before anything he comes before anything rather you know just no, I've known people and probably all have known people to do the same thing when trouble comes around all of a sudden you're on your knees crying out to God when this nation when 9-11 happened people Sitting there holding hands, you know, doing the whole kumbaya thing on the nation's capital, you know, oh, God bless America and everything. And, you know, now we're talking about, especially because of the whole gun debate and everybody saying en enough enough of prayers that, you know, they've got to act, you know. Uh, well, I take offense to that. I believe my prayers get through to God because I'm saved by the blood of Christ, amen. 
my prayers get through to God. How about you? So, but when the feeling or the fear, when that fear goes away, then it's back to business as usual. We don't need God so much anymore. Let's just toss him aside. You know, it's just not like that new, semi-new, comfortable sneaker that you only wear at certain times that are, or the old comfortable dress shoe, we'll say, that you only wear on special occasions. You know, let's toss it back on the little shoe, rock, uh, shoe rack at the back of the closet and put it back there and then till the next time, till the next holiday or something like that. It's almost the same as the only people who attend church uh, on special holidays that we've set aside. <laughs> and that's a whole other ball of wax right there. Uh, it's how people treat God sometimes. We are to acknowledge Him each and every day of our lives. If you're saved, amen, walking in the will of God, you are to stay in constant contact with the Father, amen, walking and talking with Him, amen, C communing with Him every day. You're on his mind, amen. You, he, he should be on your mind each and every day. And what Christ did for you, amen. Now, I mean, you don't do everything else that you normally do, amen. But, amen, you commune with the Lord as you're doing other things and, and have scripture going through your mind and uh, your service for the Lord and seeking Lord the seeking the Lord for what you're supposed to do and what your work is for the Lord and Lord what am I supposed to do next what do you want me to do next what are you calling me to do Lord or are you calling me to do this work or this work or next work whatever it's not just a once <laughs> one holiday a year or two holiday whatever you know people sometimes celebrate and come to service just to placate their parents you know well you know come for Mother's Day or Father's Day or just come for you know this holiday or that holiday so you can be with me you know service some people do that I would that you, and I'm sure that everyone else did, that you give your heart to the Lord, amen. Be saved. On your way to heaven, amen. Walking, as we say, on that narrow way, amen. He said, there's only few that's found on it, amen. Be part of that few, amen. Don't be part of that narrow way, amen. Let, let the Lord just come into your heart. Open, open, your, open the door to your heart he's knocking amen you don't know how much time that you have left amen we don't know how much time that we have left amen lord help us there goes my cat scratching the door we don't understand a lot of times we don't take it to heart a lot of times We think and we say, let's pray for the people that are sick and afflicted in the hospitals, amen. You know, if one of us was in the hospital, deathly ill, we don't understand. We, You know, if we're sitting here and we're doing fine, that's all fine and good to say, you know, pray. And we pray and the Lord help them in the hospital to get better. You know, let your will be done, amen, What, what whatever your will is. Hopefully they'll get better, and if they don't get better, because it's a possibility, this is where the rubber meets the road, people. If they don't get better, if they're saved, amen, and they go on from this side of eternity, then they're going to make heaven their home, amen. But just imagine, put yourself in their place, amen. And think, if I don't make it out of this hospital bed, where is my eternity going to be? A lot of us don't do that. We you know we're out here just be bopping around amen healthy as can be and you know hey i don't have to worry about it you know i got a long time to and you don't know that when you say i've got a long time before i blank whatever you don't know that 
I'm trying to, I'm trying to scare you. This is the truth of our existence on this side of eternity in this life. Amen. Sometimes accidents happen. Car crashes. For, for instance. Uh, many other things can happen. Amen. I'll go into all that. Because like I said, I don't want this to be about fear. Amen. Because, you know, the, the Lord, didn't, he didn't save you to, to try to push you out of fear into salvation. No, it's a, the goodness of God, the Bible says, that leads to repentance. Amen. It's not about fear. Amen. He, he, he wants to show you the love, amen, and what's what's ahead, amen, for you and I. And we know what's ahead if we're saved. The Word of God tells us, amen, a new heavens, a new earth. The new Jerusalem, amen, our, our, the, the, our true mother that's, you know, that's, that's, our, that's coming down, our, our, excuse me, our true bride, excuse me, <laughs> the scripture's going off the man, that's coming down from, from heaven, amen true bride Mar marriage I probably got that wrong <laughs> forgive me <laughs> sitting look at my scriptures and I'm the church being the bride of Christ marriage supper of the Lamb all these things that are going to happen amen People talked about the uh, one point with all this nonsense, this Gnostic garbage, you know, about Jesus marrying Mary Magdalene and having a child and everything like that. No, his, his, his marriage hasn't happened yet. There's the marriage supper of the Lamb, amen. It's the church, the bride of Christ, amen. That's one we say when he comes back, looking for a church, a you know, a chast version, amen, one that's not went a-whoring after strange gods, amen, one that's prepared, amen, but look at all what's in store for us after we leave here, you know, we're going to need to go by the grave or by the calling away of the church, amen, Gonna be glorious for us, Amen. Why anybody wouldn't want it? But we're attached to, once again, things down here, things we want to do down here, things we're into down here. Maybe let me say this now. Then this is just one example. I'm picking on this. This one now. Maybe we are enjoying. A substance down here. Maybe we're drinking alcohol. Maybe we're taking some kind of drug or something like that to ease a pain or something like that. But all it's doing is causing you further pain, destroying your body. See, salvation of the Lord <laughs> doesn't do any of that. It gives you joy and heart, amen. Doesn't destroy, physically destroy your body, amen. No, on the, on, on the contrary, amen. It, it, it makes you a new creature, a new creation in Christ, amen. It lifts you up, amen. It lifts you up a, and, and gives you a new life, amen. Puts those old sins and old things behind you, amen. And you know all the things that are coming according to the Word of God, amen. It's with me. Words can't describe. As I've said many times, you can imagine all these things, but it doesn't even come close to what these small brains of ours can imagine. We don't have the imagination, the brain power to imagine in our imaginations to 
to, to, to even think about what is ahead for us. By just giving our lives in faith and by faith believing to the Lord Jesus. Amen. Simple act of faith coming to him. Accepting him. Saying yes, Lord. Amen. I accept you as my personal Savior. I believe what you did. Amen. On that cross. Amen. And coming out of that tomb. Amen. Resurrected. Conquered. Death, hell, sin, and the grave. Amen. All that for you. For me. Hope if you've not called upon the Lord, amen, that the Spirit of God is working on you. He's tugging at your heart, knocking at your heart's door, and even said, "This is all, <laughs> that's mean, that's mean, brother Tim." Well, if it takes us what it takes, that He won't give you a moment's rest, a moment's peace, a moment's sleep until you give in, amen. Because it's too important, amen. This is your eternity that we're talking about, amen. It's either heaven or, or, you know, the new heavens and the new earth or, or eventually, you know, the lake of fire. Punishment forever. Torment forever. Now, if you've listened to some of these newer preachers that say, oh, well, there's really not going to be a, a eternal hell, eternal brimstone burning. and all. That's just old-fashioned teaching. You know, God loves you so much that he wouldn't really, really send you to a place like that. Word of God says there is a place like that. We obey God. Then man. His word says that there is. And there is. This man just learned this. Either from one of these newfangled seminaries that are out. Or he's just saying this to get more people. To come in to his church. And you notice I said his church. Not the church of the living God because he is straying from the word of God. He might tell you you're going to the lake of fire and or saying if you if and if you don't make it. I said this me several times here lately too, because I gotta squash we gotta squash these false doctrines, amen, and tell the truth. Saying if you go to the lake of fire, you're just gonna burn up for a certain amount of time, you know, and burn and be in punishment and torment, and after a certain amount of time, when you supposedly have learned your lesson, why would you why how would you learn your lesson? That doesn't make any sense. That's a that's a stupid doctrine. And saying after you burn for a certain amount of time and, and you learn your lesson and God thinks you've learned your lesson, you're just gonna burn up and it's gonna be like you never existed. That's a stupid doctrine. But they're teaching it. People's teaching that. So if you don't make it to heaven, then just don't worry about it. You're just gonna burn for a while and poof, you're gone. Lord help us. But we're not age. False doctrines. Doc doctrines of devils brought on by seducing spirits in the pulpits. And we're here at that point. You gotta get in the word of God. What it says. Because man will tell you anything if he thinks he can have an advantage over you and get you in to his church building to put money in his offering plate and in his pocket. God help us. Folks, latter days. Oh, I turned to the Latter days. We're in. But there's still some. At one point, who, who was it? Was it Elijah? Elijah? Was it Elijah? Elijah? I get 
the two and some of their stuff mixed up. So they had set what seven thousand men that haven't bowed their knees to Baal or, or worshipped his image. Well, I, I don't, I don't know. I can't, I can't make that. <laughs> I don't. I, the Lord hadn't told me how many people actually is, are true Christians, blood bought, born again, ready, packed up, ready to go. He hadn't. He hasn't told me how many true Christians there are in the world. Amen. All we got to make sure is you and I ourselves. Let the Word of God judge and be judging of the next person, the person beside you. Just make yourself sure. We said many times, we're all going to appear. All of us. We're going to bow. All of us. Every man. Every woman. Every human being is going to bow before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And we're all going to give an account of all that we've done. Amen. We better have the blood applied to us. Amen. Better be saved. Because he's going to put sheep on the right, the goats on the left. Amen. <laughs> One of two places to go. Amen. We said, you were born. You started your eternal journey. Never ending. Therefore, you're going to go one of two places. When you pass this time, this sojourn, this journey, this pilgrimage down here, Lord help us. Better make sure. Better make sure. Psalm chapter 5 and verse 8. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Now I know we're dealing with it. Well, let me read the finish, finish the verse. Make thy way straight before my face. Now what I was getting ready to say, I know we're dealing with a different time back in the days that David was writing the Psalms, amen. A little bit different because, <laughs> a little bit, because he was dealing with actual enemies and I hope that some of you out there listen and, or I hope I don't actually have enemies that are seeking my life now if you speak certain things against some other religions then yeah there'll be some people seeking your life uh, but as far as I know I don't have anybody seeking my life right now uh, if so then so be it uh, you know I'm if <laughs> They, if they get to me, uh, then they're just taking this right here. All they're doing is taking this. They can't touch my soul. You know, I'm, I'm going home to be with the Father. Amen. Hallelujah. So, but David said, lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness. Amen. We can say the same thing. Amen. And it says, but we do have enemies. Amen. People say, well, you know, and, and the Bible does tell us our weapons uh, of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty. Amen. Spiritual weapons, mighty, to pulling down the strongholds of the enemy, of the devil. Amen. Prince of the power of the air. Amen. The God of this present eon, uh, or this world, or this time period. Amen. And, you know, you got to look at the words, and, uh, you know, you can say, uh, but the words are translated in the right way when it says, especially the, Satan being the God of this world world the word is talking about the god of this aeon or eon amen or this time period amen because there'll be a certain point that his rule will be cut off amen at the very end when christ comes back amen but we have we do have enemies spiritual enemies and people say you know we don't wrestle against flesh and blood and that's true amen but you gotta dig deeper in the meaning of that amen we don't wrestle against flesh flesh and blood we deal with the spirit amen but those spirits work through that flesh and blood amen so in a sense we are dealing with flesh and blood but it's just telling us it's just showing us that what's behind that flesh and blood amen that's the what we're dealing with amen you understand what i'm saying i hope you do <laughs> i hope i made that clear 
So, you know, we're not we're not striving and fighting really against that flesh and blood, you know, because once that spirit, amen, gets out of that flesh and blood, remember the maniac or the person, the demonic person of the Gadarenes, amen, he was working through that flesh and no doubt that it would have come down and probably attacked. If it just been like the disciples or something like that or any people, they tried to, uh, to chain him down. He broke the chains doing all sorts of things, amen. But Jesus cast out, amen, that demonic spirit, the legion, spirits, rather, and put him in his right mind. They found him clothed in his right mind, sitting at the feet of Jesus, amen. But they have to work through a medium, so to speak, not a medium like a divination person, uh, meaning, uh, let's we'll say it a different way. They have to work through a flesh, amen. Now, there's other things that talk about that, these demonic spirits work through the, uh, they have uh, like demonic infestations like if you want to you want to get them, they work through places like and I say this to people that go through the go to these places and go search for ghost or something like that there's no such thing as ghost amen it's demonic infestations amen so if you're going doing stuff like that you're looking for the wrong things amen and you're going to get an attachment, amen, that you don't want, that you can't get rid of, amen. Especially if you're not saved, amen. If you're not saved, you shouldn't be doing stuff like that. Because you're going to get something, amen, that you're going to have to fight off, <laughs> amen. So, just as we deal, or just as David deal with natural enemies, but he also, if you remember, dealt with an unclean spirit, sort of, and an, uh, it was, uh, as we talk about so much, a depressing, an oppressive type spirit. What do you do? Yes, to, you know, to play the music. And that unclean spirit, that oppressing spirit, pushed, was sent away. One of the keys right there. So, a lot of times, not good to really sit there. In your own thoughts, especially if you've got bad stuff going on, if if the, if the if the enemy is coming against you and stuff, just allow him to play in your mind, amen. If you've got some, if you got things like going on like that, a piece of advice, amen. Get in the Word of God, pray, listen to some good gospel music, amen. Don't sit there and let the enemy sit there and just, con just constantly bombard your mind and your thoughts. Amen. Do something. Don't get in, don't, don't get in the news. I'll give you that. I'll say that. Remember we, how, how we talk about that? Don't, don't get on the news. <laughs> Definitely don't do that. But it said, Make thy way straight before my face. Verse 9, For there is no faithfulness in their mouth. Their inward part is very wickedness. Their throat is an open sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Now people do that. Our enemies. Now I don't count. Anybody. To my knowledge. Anybody. Any person. An enemy. People say, well, this and this per and these people and everything. A lot of politics going on right now. You know, I don't get, I don't do politics. I don't get into politics. I don't like what's stuff going on, but I don't discuss politics because that's one thing. That's an inroad for the enemy. There's a lot of inroads for the enemy into your mind, amen. And you let it go down into your heart, and a, a root of bitterness will spring up. <laughs> but inward part is very wickedness. <laughs> it's hit that that hit the hit the nail right on the head, did not. But <laughs> throat is an open se sepulcher. They flatter with their tongue. Amen. Now the enemy he does do that. Have to be on our guard. Amen. Just as David. I think I may have said Paul earlier by accident. I meant David. Okay. Mind swirling, amen. So, 
like I said, we don't deal with them. We don't deal with swords and shields and spears and stuff like that anymore. <laughs> uh, we do it in the spiritual sense, amen. We're under spiritual warfare. And we're under attack. Right now, we're under attack right now. These latter days, the spiritual warfare is getting more and more and more intense, amen, against the men and women of God, against the churches, amen. I've seen more and more now. When I do get in the news, it is alternative news. It is conservative, alternative news sources. It is not the mainstream, lamestream junk news, amen. Even news overseas that is looking at what's going on knows more of what's going on and will tell you the truth more than the news here. Amen. But some about churches that are being that raided. Law enforcement going in trying to shut down the churches. Amen. This is happening. What we've talked about for years and years and years is happening. The word of God is being fulfilled right before our very eyes. And what we're doing? Looking around saying, hmm, well. Now, I'm not accusing anybody out there. I'm just saying, this is what's going on. What do we need to do? We need to rise up, people. Come on, we're the army of the living God, amen? Look at verse 10. Now, I'm not saying that we should do this ourselves, Amen? Okay, let me make that clear. Verse 10, destroy thou them. We do not, once again, fight a physical warfare. Destroy thou them, O God. What God does, what we pray, what God does, God does on his own accord. We pray. God does the actions. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying he destroys anybody, amen, especially if a person can repent, amen, and needs to be saved, and they have a chance to go to heaven, amen. Like I said, looking right here, we're dealing with a different time. So destroy them, O God, let them fall by their own counsels, cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions, for they have rebelled against me, amen. This country, the people that are working in this country, the rulers of the darkness of this world and around the world amen and here Lord God cast them out in the multitude of their transgressions rip the veil of secrecy over them or let us see them amen for what they are for they have rebelled against thee they are rebelling against God every single day. If we could only see the plans that are being made in secret. Just as I say a lot, talking about the days in Ezekiel talks about when he was shown abominable things going on. And he continued, he said, oh, son, you know, son of man, continue to look. I, no, not, this, no, saying this verbatim, but he continued to say, oh, okay, you seen this? I'm going to continue Keep watching. I'm going to continue to show you even more and further abomination, showing what the priests and everything that 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 supposedly were supposed to upheld God's laws and everything for for Israel. Amen. No, they're doing no doubt they're doing the day walking around in their priestly robes, looking all regal and nice, and holding their hands up and being all you know <laughs> priestly <laughs> before God. Amen. But during the night, Amen. Behind the scenes. Basically doing an amount of what amounted to, you know, false worship or false worship and false idols, false gods or, you know, satanic worship and everything. Saying God has, you know, even one part saying God has abandoned Israel and doesn't watch Israel anymore. So we're going to worship these gods and these, uh, these uh, false images and false gods. Doesn't say they weren't real. What? Calm down. <laughs> We're talking about fallen angels and demonic spirits. Amen. But the nation, our nation, 
heart is rebelling against God. I really, truly believe it's the men and women of God, amen, that are holding partly the Spirit of God, amen. God, God holding this nature along with the men and women of God that are holding this country together, amen. Imagine when the church is pulled out of here and the Spirit of God is pulled out, what is going to happen? But listen to verse 11. But all those, or excuse me, but let all those that put their trust <coughs> in thee rejoice. Let them ever shout for joy because thou defendest them. Let them also that love thy name be joyful in thee. Hallelujah. We put our trust in the Lord. Amen. Let the enemy work behind the scenes, amen. Let the rulers of the darkness of this world, amen, that answer to the principalities and powers, amen, and to the spiritual wickedness that's going on in the heavens, amen, in the high places, amen. <laughs> we know they're working. We know what they're doing. We see stuff like that, don't you? Do your research. You see what's going on. You see the deception going on. At least I hope you do. I hope you're doing it. I hope you got your eyes open. Come on. <laughs> Look at verse 12. For thou, Lord, wilt bless the righteous. With favor wilt thou compass him as with the shield. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is our shield. Amen. Talked about, what was it, uh, I guess, last Wednesday night, I guess, when we were preaching, talked about that he will raise up a standard against the enemy. When it comes, the enemy comes against us like a flood, he will raise up a standard. Amen? Because we're in a battle. Folks, we are in a battle against the enemies of God. Against the spiritual enemies of God. Amen? And so much. They're doing so much. So many abominable things abominations before the Lord amen and maybe you know even though Lord help us to try to keep the, these g-rated amen I wish you could just let go and name the things that are going on amen but you can imagine Look in the Old Testament. The things named by God that says, These are abominations. You shall not do them. That involve the worship of these false deities, these false gods. The things done, amen, that God said were abominations. The things done to children that were abominations. The other things done that, that are still in enforced amen that are still part of the law that says that we are not to do them look to them and you will get your answer of what is going on still in the world today behind the scenes amen look there that would give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on even now Ephesians 5 and 6. I find there that what happens though, a lot of people, when they don't see it up front, and they say that, oh, no, they say nothing's going on. We don't see it. Because, well, why is nothing? We don't see it on the news and everything. Ephesians 5 and 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Five, five and seven. Be not ye therefore partakers with him. Five and eight. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. Amen. But on the contrary, it says, let no man deceive you with vain words. Just because these people are saying, oh, this is the way it is. Do not believe them. Amen. What does the word of God say? 
If it puts it in there, there's a reason God put it in there. Amen? Now, as I put it, said it in uh, maybe our, the last video or the video before that, we are letting, <laughs> we, or shall I say this, we are changing the Word of God to fit us. We are not letting the Word of God uh, change us. We, we are changing it to fit what we want. We are changing it to make it more palatable to the things that we want to do and we want to see. Or just casting it off and away, period. When we have performers out of Hollywood or wherever, New York or wherever, that will get on stage and, rip, and take a copy of the Bible and rip out pages of it and say scriptures out of those pages and then start cursing them wad them up and chewing them in their mouth and spitting them out you gotta know that there is a problem going on amen that infuriates me when I think about that but it's going on and that doesn't even scratch the surface people God help us Let no man deceive you. Deception. What did Lord Jesus, as we said so many times, when I talk about deception so much, because deception is here. It's going on. Amen. Right now before our eyes. Lord Jesus said to me, let no man deceive you. Don't be deceived. Paul talked about it. Don't, don't be deceived. It means he's going to come. Lord Jesus, it means he's going to come in my name. Now they are going to accept one that's going to come in his own name. In his own name. But they're not going to accept, and they didn't accept, the Lord Jesus. Come in the name of his Father, the true Messiah. Amen. But hallelujah. Romans 3 and 23. Knowing this, I find this. And it is true. It says, for all of sin to come short of the glory of God. See, after just talking about all that, just drop that in, yeah. If you've not went, and of how many times, Lord help us, have I said that, if you've not went to some certain points to where it has made you, and some people don't believe this fact, but the Word of God backs it up. If you've not went to certain, there are certain points that you can go that will make you unredeemable. I just can't believe that. Yeah. You take the mark of the beast. That's it. I don't care what they teach you nowadays. You t some some teach you take the mark of the beast. And at the very end, you can reject it and you can still be saved. No, you take it. That's it. You're sealed. You blaspheme the Holy Ghost. You're sealed. You backslide on the Lord and you never repent and come back to the Lord. You're sealed. Some people don't believe that. Word of God backs it up. I didn't write it. Don't be don't be mad at the messenger. Check through it and get in the Word of God. Yeah, I know he said he will never leave you, he will never forsake you, but you can leave him and forsake him. He's not going to arm bar you. Down, back down to an altar of repentance that's forgiveness it's got to be by your own will and your own heart Whew, this is some serious stuff here but yes we've all sinned to come short of the glory of God it's only by his grace his mercy that we make it to heaven amen because it said in verse 3 and 4 find it says being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God, verse 25, whom God set forth, whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past, past, through forbearance of God. Sins past.
no sin is going to enter heaven. Period. God cannot look upon sin while we have to be justified for you by his grace, by washing his blood, to ask for forgiveness, amen, to be forgiven, amen. Well, we have, that's why it's so important that we stay on that narrow road to stay and live a repentant life before God. Now, I'm not saying live in fear the entire time that you're alive and have to look down at your feet and have to say, oh, just, just, you know, you know, all the time just worried to death, oh, I'm, the next, next step I take, if I do it wrong, I'm going to slip off into hell. No. You know, if, if you're saved, as we talk about, each and every day, you're moving up close to God, all these things, you're shedding off, and that you're not looking back, you're holding on to the plow, moving forward. A lot of these things, you should be shedding off, getting rid of. That's why I talk about doing that. I talk about living more and more each and every day, walking closer to God, getting rid of these things, the Spirit working in you, getting rid of this junk and garbage. The, the sin that does so easily trips you up makes you fall besets you helps wipe that away Now, I know we're not going to be perfect. The spirit inside of us is perfect. But lead, but lead and live a humble, repentant life before God. His grace and mercy will take care of the rest. Amen. The enemy's coming before you, trying to tempt you. His word in prayer, in fasting, to show you what to do. Lord, help us. It's the way we have to live before God. Now, I don't glorify in saying and talking about that but it has to give I have to throw out that warning and to talk about this stuff the watchman doesn't and the preacher the teacher the evangelist whatever the watchman doesn't blow the horn and say look this is happening or this is coming or this is what's going to happen then I'm responsible I don't want the blood on my hands that I didn't put the stuff out there didn't say anything and I'll be hold, held accountable. Because I don't want to see anyone drop off into the pits of hell. Amen? In the lake of fire. No. I want to see being justified freely by the grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Amen? That's what I want people to fall into. Amen? And accept that. Amen? And make heaven and the new heavens, the new earth, their home, amen, for all eternity. But many are not. Now, if somebody's not and sees this, what are you going to do? Is the Lord knocking at your heart? You own the defense, you own the edge. 
Now there's not really a fence per se when you're saved but if you're almost there when Paul stood before the council giving an account who was it? Was it Caesar I believe said he said almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian he said I, I, I would that thou be almost but all the way persuaded I can't remember verbatim what he said <laughs> memory problems he said, I, "I wish that you would be all the way persuaded, and 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 more that you know you'd be persuaded, and all those under the sound of my voice would be persuaded fully to be a Christian." Say, so confession is man to salvation. The Lord is knocking at your heart's door, Amen. He he he's wanting in. He's wanting. He's calling you to salvation. Except the Spirit draw you. The Bible said there is no. Salvation. The Spirit has to draw you in. He's knocking at your heart door. If you don't want to live the life, amen, you've been living, if you want to be a new creature, a new creation in Christ to make heaven your home, amen. The verse 24 said, and I'll say it again, being justified freely. It's a free gift. It said, by His grace, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, He died on that cross for you and I put in that borrowed tomb conquered death hell sin the grave when he arose on that third and appointed day arose death he gave his life no one took it he gave it willingly now ascended back to the father where he sits on the right hand of the father making intercession for you and I you confess your sins to him ask for forgiveness and tell him you want to be saved you want him to save you you want to serve him the remainder of your days you want him to come into your heart take up a boat amen to forever be there amen he will save you amen pull your heart out to him I can't tell you what to say other than that you pull your heart out to him amen and you'll get up off that altar wherever that altar may be it may not even be in a church maybe at your home maybe at your job maybe somewhere else he can save you wherever. But you'll be saved. You'll want to tell others. Because there'll be joy in your heart. You're on your way to heaven now. Amen. Back sitting on the Lord. You know. <laughs> you know what you need to do. We said the grass was not greener on the other side. And if you got out for some reason. Don't think coming back is going to be problem don't let coming back that people's going to shame you or nothing like that it's not going to be like that no people want to see you come back people's going to want to see you get bright with God once again and shake your hand or hug your neck so welcome back you're on your way back to heaven amen Praise God. Hallelujah. That's the word of the Lord for the day. Hope you got something from it. I sure did. Not because it was me. <laughs> because it's the Spirit of God. Amen. It's always because of the Spirit of God and what the Lord gives. Never who it is. Amen. It's because it's the Word of God. Amen. And it is the true Word of God. Amen. I want to tell you something and lie in the Word of God. Because there again, I'm going to be held accountable. I'm going to be held to a higher level because of preaching and teaching the Word of God. Amen. So I got to be sure. Amen. Not that I'm going to get any great big reward because of, you know, be and be above anybody. No. I'm not because, no, I'm going to be held accountable before because of what I've said I want to be the truth I don't want to deceive anybody amen amen All right God bless
each and every one of you. Blessings of Christ Jesus is on each and every one of you. Pray for one another. Lift one another up in prayer. Exhort one another. Amen. Encourage one another. Amen. And uh, pray for those that are sick and afflicted in the hospital. Uh, remember those that's unsaved, that they'll come to the Lord. And remember those that's backslidden out of the will of God, that they'll come back to the Lord. Amen. And they'll repent and get back in the will of God. Amen. And be back on their way to heaven. Amen. No better way to be. No better thing <laughs> to have than salvation. No better path to walk than in the will of God. Amen. As we like to say. So, uh, I don't think there's any announcements or anything. Uh, we just appreciate the Lord for everything. Most of all, for the salvation He's given. Amen. Thank the Lord for the day He's given, and let's rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right, this is Tim, Associate Pastor with the Word of Life Church. Another edition of the Word of Life Church Video Ministries. Amen. Everyone take care, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Bye now.